Hello and welcome to a new watercolour video. Today I've got a tutorial of this pretty autumn scene. So I'll be painting this step by step, explaining what I'm doing. If you want to get the line drawing so you can follow along, it's on my Patreon. It's free of charge. I'll leave a link to it below. I'm using Schminky watercolours, but you can just use whatever watercolours you have. And these are the colours that we're using in this picture. Cobalt Green Dark, Jaune Brilliant Dark, Burnt Sienna, English Venetian Red, Chrome Orange Hue, Quinacridone Gold Hue, Burnt Umber Neutral Tint, Ultramarine and Transparent Orange. And I'm also using one Daniel Smith paint which is called Aussie Red Gold. All these colours are linked below as well. Now we need to mix some colours before we start. So the first one is Cobalt Green Dark with a little bit of Jaune Brilliant mixed in. The next one is Chromium Orange with a tiny little bit of Ultramarine just to tone that orange down a little bit. So it looks kind of a little bit like a dirty orange. Um, burnt Umber with lots of neutral tint to make it like a really really dark brown we're going to be using that for the trunks of the trees then some ultramarine with a little bit of neutral tint just to tone it down and make it look like a a grey blue and then the last one jaune brilliant with a little bit of burnt umber so you end up with this kind of nice mushroomy colour Okay, so trace your image onto the watercolour paper and then carefully lay some tape around the edges to stop it curling. I'm also adding a frame, a square frame with some more tape. Okay, so for the first layer, we're going to start with the sky. So with the Jaune Brilliant and Burnt Umber mix, I'm painting that to the whole of the sky area. And I'm painting it right onto the dry paper. And I'm slightly taking that colour down to the top of the trees, so I'm slightly overlapping the trees. And then I just dab that back out with a white tissue just from the tree areas. Next, we're painting the trees wet on dry. So start with a watery first layer and vary the colours with different autumn shades from the paints that we're using. So quinacridone gold, burnt sienna, burnt umber and just alternate the colours and and we just want them to softly blend into each other so that's okay if they run into each other a little bit and then while that's still wet I'm dropping in a little bit of burnt umber just to give a little bit of variation and then just let that spread out on its own then just dry that off and then we'll move on to the houses Okay, so onto the houses. So we're painting all the houses different colours, so we're just ra randomising the colours. Um, this one here I'm painting is the ultramarine with a little bit of neutral tint mixed in. I'm also using the cobalt green with the Jean Brilliant mix, the chromium orange with ultramarine mix, and I'm also using Jean Brilliant on its own and English Venetian red. So you want to make the houses in the background a little bit paler than the ones in the foreground and that'll give the illusion of distance. It'll make those houses look further back if they're paler in colour. So I'm just painting all the roofs with neutral tint. Um, I'm not making it like a solid colour. I'm making it stronger in some areas and more watery in others because I just want to give it that kind of messy, sketchy, kind of like urban sketching kind of feel to it. Also, I'm using a really tiny brush. I used this for the houses as well. They are quite small, so you will need a small brush. I tried to use a larger brush, but it was too big. All the brushes and the paints that I'm using are in the description below, so if you want to see what type of brushes they are, the information's in the description. So we want to do the same with the roof that we did with the houses, where the colour's much stronger towards the front, and then as you get further back, towards the houses in the distance, we want to make those roofs a much fainter paint, so it needs to be a lot more watery. 
but this is only the first layer so we can add more layers to the front houses later on if we want to make the colours deeper. So using the Jean Brilliant Burnt Umber Mix again, we're going to paint the pavement area. You'll need to switch back to a larger brush for this. And you just want to quickly, loosely paint that on and take it right up to the base of the houses. It doesn't matter that it's going over the tree trunks because they're going to be covered up with a much darker colour. And while that's still wet, we're going to drop in some darker colour, wet in wet. So get some burnt umber on your brush, take it straight from the pan so that it's nice and strong. And then add some streaks, start off darker at the bottom and then getting a little bit fainter as it goes up to the top. Then using the Jean Brilliant Burnt Umber Mix, just paint all the windows and doors just to take the white off the paper and then that's the first layer complete. So we'll now move on to the second layer. So with a larger mop brush, I'm wetting all the sky area and kind of taking it down over the trees. Then getting some really strong Burnt Umber on my brush and I'm just going to make the sky patchy. So I'm concentrating mainly on the top corners, making the top corners darker, the, like the darkest. And then just a few little streaks and splodges in the middle. And then I'm just drying that off with the heat gun. And I'm going to paint the tree trunks. So this is the burnt umber and neutral tint mix. So it's very, very dark. So I'm just carefully painting them in and they are just going to be that one solid color. Okay, so that's where we are so far. It's kind of the ugly stage. It doesn't look very good at the moment, but it will all come together in the end and look really nice. Now I'm onto the second layer of the background trees. I'm just adding a little bit of shading. So not a lot of detail in these because they're in the background and we don't want them to stand out. So I'm using burnt umber and some of the other colors from earlier. And I'm just kind of painting a little bit of shading to the left and the bottom areas of all of the trees. And then I'm cleaning my brush off and drying it and then just going over that edge there just to soften it a little bit. So we don't want any hard edges in the background bringing attention to the background. Okay, so onto the main trees in the foreground. I'm using a really cheap household paintbrush here that's all really scruffy and rough at the ends. So I'm just dabbing in some quinacridone gold and it's a really watery mix. And then while that's still wet, we want to drop in some Aussie red gold, make this one a little bit stronger than the first one. And we want to go outside the edges of the tree. So it looks like there's like leaves on the outer edge. And then while that's still wet, get some neat burnt sienna on the ends of those bristles and just dab that in all over the trees. Okay, so now dry that off with a hairdryer or a heat gun. And then we'll go on to another layer. We're going to do multiple layers for these trees. So I'm switching to this fan brush. This one's by Jackson's. And I'm using burnt sienna and I'm just dabbing all over the tree and out onto the edges as well because I'm trying to cover that line, that harsh line around the edge of the tree. And then on this tree here I'm creating a darker area to make the front tree stand out. So with every layer that we do I keep on darkening that area, make it darker and darker just so that you can see that it's two different trees and they don't blend together. And while that's still wet, I'm now using burnt umber on the corner of the brush and making that area even darker. And then I'm just dabbing in more burnt umber to mainly the bottom and the left areas of the trees. But then a few sporadic bits up to the top as well. So this is how we're going to create like a nice shade. Now I've dried that off and then I'm going in with another layer. 
Now I'm making this layer a lot brighter, so I'm actually using trans orange, transparent orange, um, because it's really vibrant. So I'm adding quite a bit of that because I want the trees to really stand out. So I'm doing a layer of dabs of that. And then also more burnt umber to the bottom and the left. And you want to make that quite dark. So it really gives some nice shading to the tree. And then just dry that off and we'll move on to the background trees. Just adding a little bit of detail, just very faint, just dabbing in just those colours that I used from before and just making some, just some texture, very faint background texture. And I'm using a small brush again. Then going back in to the larger tree and I'm using that dark colour that I used for the trunk, which is burnt umber and neutral tint. And I'm going in with a tiny little brush and I'm trying to diffuse that edge and then just adding some more dark little bits of texture just to finish those trees off it really makes them pop out right for another layer on the pavement you want to get the burnt umber neutral tint mix and paint a line beneath the houses. Then rinse your brush out and dab it dry and then blend that paint down just to the level of the steps where the steps end. Now we're going to paint all the windows with neutral tint. So these ones in, these ones in the distance we just want really watery, faint little window shapes, just to like give the hint of windows in the background. And then make the paint a little bit stronger as you get towards the front houses. Then using all the colours that we've already used, just paint all the doors different colours, just whatever you choose. And then the same with the people as well, just use a tiny little brush and paint them all in. So I used black for most of the legs and then a really watery mix of burnt umber for the heads and faces. Okay, so that's most of the painting done. Now I'm just outlining everything with a black pen. So this is a fountain pen with waterproof ink and I need to use waterproof in case I want to go back over it so that the ink doesn't run. Um, I mean, you can use a fountain pen or you can use a fine liner just whatever your choice is but I did actually switch to a, a finer pen the first ones I thought the lines were a bit thick so I think this finer one looks much better and I didn't put any lines on the houses at the very back row okay so I'm just gonna have a look over the picture now and see if there's anything I need to add or change now I think the pavement area is a little bit pale I want to darken that up especially at the bottom I want it to be darker than the little brown bits we've got at the top I'm also going to make some of the houses stronger color because it's quite pale compared to the trees so yeah just look over and see if there's any changes you want to make so this house was the English Venetian red and I'm just making it a lot stronger. I'm also adding a little bit more orange to some of the paler houses. And then I'm adding some water onto the pavement area and dropping some burnt umber in there, but mainly to the very bottom because I want a darker edge on the bottom. Then just using the heat gun to dry that off. And then finally, I'm just getting the neutral tint and I'm using like a dry brush, so it's like a side of the brush and I'm putting a little bit of shadow underneath all the trees and all the people. Then this is completely optional, but I'm adding a little bit of white just to some of the panels on the doors and then tidying up some of those window ledges as well. And I'm using a white jelly roll pen for this. Okay, so that's the picture finished. 
So the last thing left to do is taking the tape off, which is always really satisfying. That white on the paper like really makes the picture stand out. And it looks so good. And then my piece of paper was much larger than the picture itself at the sides. So I'm going to cut those edges down and make the frame the same size all the way around. Um, but I've got that rough edge at the bottom, which I'm going to leave because I think it looks really nice. OK, so that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've followed along. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a like and consider subscribing if you're not already. And I'll hopefully have another painting up very soon. Oh, and also, if you don't mind, it'll really help me out if you could share this video on social media. So thanks for watching.